the mind is identified with the doer, whether it's action or inaction, it's the same, it's going to be the same error, it's going to be the same stress and pressure. And I, one of the parts of the course that I really like in the manual for teachers, they ask Jesus, how is judgment relinquished? Isn't that a kind of interesting question to hear what Jesus Christ has to say on how is judgment relinquished? Mm -hmm. And he says in that, it's not so much the relinquishment of, of giving up the judgment, it's more you have to see the illusion of giving up. In other words, you, you have to go prior to the judgment and see that you never actually could judge in the first place. You see, how different that is from trying to stop judging. Because with stopping, saying I'm going, to stop, I'm going to figure out how to stop judging, it's like you're making an admission, okay, I'm judging. Who's judging? <laughs> it's already, you're caught. And, and how do you stop a runaway freight train? You don't. <laughs> you, know, you have to come to an admission, you don't stop a, a runaway freight train. But, what if there's a state of mind that's a priori, that's prior, you know, before Abraham was, I am. Before judgment was, I amness. That's where the innocence is. It's not a matter of trying to stop something that you believe is already occurring. It's just opening your mind to see that pure innocence of what must actually be so. God doesn't create judge, judgment. What would be the point of God creating judgment? You know, it doesn't have a point, as we were saying earlier, there is no point to it. So to me, that's just this aha, this gleeful, joyful, happy aha of having this experience of, of this perfect innocence that, that has always been. There was never a judge. There was never the judgment. And then the question comes, like you were just asking, is it practical? Well, I find it is immensely practical, because when you are surrendered into this state of mind, then everything is given. It's not like you're just the big void, and now you, you can't function. You might say that you have full functionality in the stillness, instead of believing that the functionality came from the doer. Because the doer is not really the source of, of true wisdom, true intelligence, true even functionality. It all comes from, from source. You know, like in quantum physics, it's saying that everything is potentiality. Everything's energy, everything's potentiality. And it's only limiting beliefs that kind of throw out the context of, of choice between doing or not doing, acting or not acting. That's, that's just a projection of a belief, but actually holistic perception, you know, doesn't have that dilemma. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's not a matter of do and or don't do. I mean, when you look at morality, all morality is is all the do's and don't do's. But if you went around the world and you and you interview people in all these cultures, you would find that there is no universal theology or there is no universal morality. It's all relative, which means, you know, in, in absolute terms, that none of, it's, none of it has validity. So, when you begin to see that, then you can let it go. But until you see it, then it seems like a conundrum, it seems like an anomaly. You're just, like in the Matrix, you're just watching all these potential ways of playing out the impossible, and feeling you've got to find the one that's that's who you are, and, and you can't find it. It's not because really, they're all illusions? Because yeah, because they're all illusions. illusions. And that's that scene that from the Matrix where he gets to the architect, and, and the problem is choice. As all the screens, he's screaming. Yeah. He's, he's yeah. really in, in a tense emotion in all those different screens. <laughs>